Interior design, while despised by some, is something I absolutely love to do. There's just something special about walking into a build and seeing a decked out interior space. In my opinion, in order to be a good builder in Minecraft, you have to know how to do both exteriors and interiors. And so, my name is System Z, and today I'm going to show you how to design interiors. For today's video, I built the exterior of this suburban house. Let's check it out. <laughs> The goal for today is to take the shell of this house and plan out a layout for our interior as well as to provide lighting and furniture to complete the overall build. But before we can do that, we'll need to go over a couple of things, starting with our layout. Taking this suburban house for our example, we have two floors to work with, with most of the space being on the bottom floor due to the garage in the back side of the house. The easiest way to create a good layout would be to separate the floors and replicate the shape in a different location altogether. That way we have plenty of room to work with. Now that we have our floors separated, we need to decide on what rooms we would like to add to our house. Starting with the basics, we're going to need a kitchen, a living room, a bathroom, a dining room space, and a maximum of two bedrooms. We also need to work in a set of stairs leading to the second floor, the garage, and the smaller areas of our house, like the entrance for example. Dividing rooms can sometimes be the most difficult part of designing interior, so I really recommend you take this step slowly to ensure that you're 100% happy with the resulting layout. Take the time to decide whether or not you want a heavily divided interior or a generally open layout. Once you've developed your layout, we can move on to the next step, developing our color palette. You'll need to choose colors for your floors, ceilings, walls, and even a primary and secondary accent color. This step is important for deciding if you want a bright and modern interior or a generally calm and dark interior. Color can ultimately make or break a build, so it's important to choose carefully and not rush through this step. Now that we have our layout and color palette developed, we can start working on the actual interior of our house. Going back to the suburban house I built, I'm going to go ahead and start using the layout to build up our walls and use the colors I selected to separate the ceiling and floor. This step will allow you to see how your house will generally look once fully furnished and gives you sort of a preview of the final product. Do not be afraid to make any changes at this point because it'll be a lot more difficult further down the line. With our floor plan established and our walls raised up, we can go ahead and start furnishing our house. I think it might be best to do this together though, so let's jump into a creative world. Alright guys, now that we are inside of our suburban house here, you can see we've got a lot of space to work with, so this should be very interesting. And as you can see, we've got a kitchen back here. We've got a very open living room, a garage, and a bathroom over there. Of course, our entrance area and all of the bedrooms upstairs, as well as even an entertainment area where I'll be turning it into an office. So I'm not really going to go over everything together because, of course, that would take a long time. And I'm sure you don't want to watch a very long video. So what we're going to do is show you the basics of interior design. And I guess we're going to start with this bedroom right here. So every single room inside of a house is always going to have a couple of things. It's going to have a window, of course. It's definitely going to have a doorway. But it's also going to have a main centerpiece. And that would be pretty much the piece of furniture that's always going to be in that room, no matter whose house you go to. If you go into a bedroom, there is always going to be a bed. That's going to be the first thing. Now, regarding the furniture that we use today, you can go and on my video in the description, there's going to be a link to a video that I showed different furniture designs, and you can basically just copy those if you'd like. This is a bed design that's very simple and very commonly used. If you'd rather use a standard bed, you could even do that. But in every single bedroom, you are going to definitively find a bed unless they've repurposed the room for something. Now, if we look at another room, you know, take the living room, for example, you're always going to find a seating arrangement. You're going to find sofas, chairs, all that kind of stuff. A kitchen, you're going to have your cabinets. Dining room table, you're going to have your table. Bathrooms, of course, a toilet. Like, there's always a centerpiece to every single room. Now, aside from that, you're also going to find things like other decorations. You're going to find cabinets or storage units. In a bedroom, you might find a chest or something to store different clothes in. Now this is a very basic design. Like I said, I've got plenty of other cabinet designs. You can check out that video if you want to see those, but just for the speed of the video, we've got a very, you know, open chest here. And you might even find some sort of lighting system. You might 
take this modern lamp, for example. Oh, <laughs> that's not where it goes. There we go. And then you've basically got a room. Genuinely, you've basically got a fully decorated room. You can do things like add paintings to add, you know, different textures onto the wall. For example, here we're going to take this picture of whoever and put it right there. And you've got a generally modern room. The only thing you might want to do is put lighting in the roof, but that's entirely up to you. That is basically a bedroom in a matter of a couple of seconds of building. Another great example is a dining room. In this case, you're probably going to find a dining room table in every dining room that you go into. So what I'll be doing is using a new 1.13 block, which is the spruce trap door, to create a very nice tabletop. We're also going to use some oak stairs to contrast a chair design with some signs on the side. It looks really good against the birch there. Only going to do two chairs to make sure we're not taking up too much space. And immediately, you see, this does not look very organic. It doesn't really fit the room. It looks very offset, and it's very weird to look at. One way you can combat this is to add a secondary decoration piece, just like we did in the bedroom. But this is used to basically pull all of the furniture pieces together and create a new center point. If we take this away, you'll see that this is the center point of the room. And it's not even. We've got more space on this side than we do over here. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it still looks a little bit weird. And a lot of times people in Minecraft like to make a center point in the center of the room. So right now, this is our center point. Whereas if we put this secondary bookshelf with a potted plant on top, alternatively, you could do a cauldron and leaves for a potted plant. The new center becomes either this block or the very center of both of those blocks. Basically, the line that separates those two blocks in this six-block width room. That's one of the techniques that I use all the time, and it is very, very important in interior design. So, as a final example, if we go back to the bedroom, you can see that we've got a primary piece here with the bed. That's going to be the piece that you're going to find in every single room of a house. You're going to find a bed in a bedroom, a table in a dining room, you're going to find a sofa in a living room, and a car in a garage... And then you're going to find secondary pieces. Those are going to be your cabinets, your chests, your drawers, your dressers, all that kind of stuff. Then you're going to find your tertiary pieces, which are going to be things like, you know, lighting sources, bookshelves. You're going to find potted plants, all that kind of stuff. And, of course, your quaternary, which is going to be your paintings or other wall decorations. All of those really come together to create a very beautiful and well-balanced interior. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and do the entire house. And I'm going to try and pick out the best examples to the primary and secondary rule that I follow, as well as the centered rule, so that we're not too offset with everything. And basically do the entire house and give you guys a tour of the entire finished interior right after. So let's go ahead and get started. And just like that, the entire interior layout is done. And throughout this tour, I'm going to try and show you more examples of the whole primary and secondary design system that I use, as well as the offset system. And starting off, we have the mud room here, which is basically the first room that you would really enter in a house. It's where you would leave your boots or your keys, maybe your wallet in some cases, or your coat. So in this case, our primary furniture feature, really more of a decoration, is just this coat stand. Very, very simple. This room isn't too important, though, so let's go ahead and move on. And immediately, you are greeted by a nice, very open hallway and our staircase here. It's extremely important that the pathway straight to the back door is wide open and clear. Because otherwise, your house is going to feel very clear, or very cluttered, not clear. It's complete opposite. The key of perspective is important. You want to make sure that the user who walks into your house gets a clear shot to the back. That'll make it feel more open and a little bit more organized. In this case, I have a secondary feature with the bookshelf and even a secondary piece here. This isn't necessary. So, and a good example of what I mean by primary and secondary is that a primary furniture piece is required for the room. Secondary is completely optional and just there to fill up space, which both of these are doing. So as we kind of move into the kitchen here, you can see I've done for sort of a modern design. We've got a nice modern lamp here. Of course, our fridge design, cabinets, oven, dishwasher, all of that good stuff. General design and our dining room table. This would be a necessary feature in this room as well as the kitchen here. 
So these are both primary. Everything else, however, is secondary. So again, primary is required. Secondary is there to fill up space like a shelf. And a tertiary, which would be the third variant, would be wall decor. That's not necessary, and it's really there for personalization. So quick definition recap with primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary is going to be your necessary piece. Secondary is going to be there to fill up the space and the tertiary, again the third variant, is going to be your personalization with the wall decor. So let's go ahead and move on to the living room, which is one of my favorite designs in the entire house. We've got our primary sofa here, which is absolutely gorgeous with a nice carpet as well. Hidden lighting as well to bring in some nice, you know, open room feeling without having anything hanging from the ceiling. I think that's very important. Of course, a mantle with a TV on top. This is basically just black concrete on a map, by the way. It's like really far that way. I just use the fill command to fill a giant space and span it across the entire item frame system here. And it kind of makes it look like a TV. It's something you can do in survival, but it might take a little bit of time. But I'd say it's worth it. It's kind of a nice design. You could even really draw something out if you'd like. Got a nice painting on the wall. Of course, some nice uh, wall decor with the table here and the bookshelf. All secondary pieces and pretty much anything up on the wall would be tertiary. So, of course, our wall decor there and some bar stools. I went ahead and opened up the wall because that's a very good system for making an open atmosphere in a home. Again, having a clear view is important, but also having a clear view of the kitchen is very important as well. This is going to be our main living space. This is where every guest and even, you know, resident would actually be. So this is very important that we don't make it feel too claustrophobic. So let's go ahead and walk down the hallway here. We've got our garage, which looks amazing. We've got two primary features here, and I want to see if you can pin them out really quickly. What do you think is primary and secondary in this room? Good job. The primary features are the vehicle here, which I didn't make this design. I went on Google and found the closest one to what I thought would look good and fit. So don't know who built it, but I'm sorry. I don't know your name. <laughs> Looks good though. And then of course, we've got the trash can here and recycling bin. So those are both primary. Kind of. These aren't necessary, but I think they add a nice touch to a garage. Of course, our storage is secondary and our shelves are secondary. And of course, with the tertiary, it's kind of the unnecessary but still good smaller details like the railing system for the garage, the little beeper system to notify the garage when to open by pressing the button, and even the safety mechanism just to check with the laser to see if anyone's under it. Really love this garage design. I think it looks awesome. And then, of course, a bathroom. Don't really have anything to say about it, though. There's nothing crazy about a bathroom. You really don't even need them, to be honest. It's just kind of cool to know it's there, I guess. It makes it feel like a house. Oh, and then, of course, this wall decor. Again, you don't want anything too cluttered in your hallways. It's very important that you can walk through with at least two blocks. All right, guys, I promise we are almost done. Let's go ahead and go upstairs and go immediately to the left here. We've got another bathroom. What a surprise. We really don't need these, but I keep building them for some reason. Now, this hallway is completely unnecessary. It's basically here to get to the bathroom and look outside in the backyard. So don't put anything in here. You don't need it. <laughs> but you can use a shelf to break up the wall if you want, just to add a little bit more detail and tie, you know, the spruce from the rest of the room into this blank wall. It's definitely a good one. And of course, our second bedroom, probably the master bedroom, realistically. Nice headboard, other, you know, bed design here. We've got a secondary feature with the dresser and table, potted plants, lamp, and painting. Pretty much the same design that we used in this bedroom. So again, primary, secondary, secondary and tertiary design so that's very important i also added a window in here to open it up a little bit more last but not least we have our office now this could be an entertainment room as well you can see i got a little bit lazy with this room but ultimately it's not necessary to go all out we have the same features here that we've used throughout the entire house just in different ways a different type of table here with the stairs I actually messed up here it's supposed to be like that one but hopefully you didn't notice until i pointed it out nice laptop design open view to the window it doesn't have to be crazy and uh guys one of my favorite things that i do is use item frames to make a rustic wall art i don't know why i've been doing that lately but i think it looks really good especially against spruce so it's really important as a builder for interior to leave calling cards. I'd say that is one of mine. But one of my favorite features is that I always leave this particular flower scattered throughout the house. I think it's very important to keep a color scheme. And in this case, you don't really see too much pink in the room. But you'll notice that I use this painting quite a bit because it really goes well with that flower as well as 
uh, this flower here, the azure bluette, or however you say it. <laughs> So that's one of the cool things, is really just those small details really make a person know that this is your build. And that's it guys, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to subscribe and let me know what you'd like to see next. I absolutely love this house design, both inside and out. I think it is a marvelous design. Let me know if you'd like a tutorial for the actual structure because it was pretty easy to build all together. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been System Z. You guys have been awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.